have out fangirled my fangirl. A sexy Bollywood director runs to America to get his sister-in-law to divorce his bro. Best kind of ever! Neely was a child bride and hasn't seen her hub since she was four. But our Mr. Playboy is on a mission, so he decides to play the lying game. Alas, poor Samir is in a creative rut until BAM! Turns out the dorky, exuberant, silly Neely is his artistic muse. Aww. And the girl is a hoot. She plays plays swords with cooking utensils and thinks you arrogant donkey is a wordy turd. She's such an awkward clutch she runs her bike ass first into a tree while trying to flee Mr. Sexy McSexface. But unlike other heroines I could name, this one actually has got wit. Are you crying? No, it's raining, but only on my face. <laughs> Oh my god, I love her. This chick is such a crier that I swear she would shed tears over a farting bunny. Tears may be her jam, but she is morally strong with integrity out the wazoo. She's so dedicated to the hubby she's never met that you just want stickers and lollipops and happiness for her. The book is mostly a friends to lovers slash nurse back to health story. Half of it is fangirl flailing cute, and the other half is cry your face off sad. Brace for feels. Smear is a rascal playboy with trauma baggage so big it'll hulk punch you in the heart. His mixed heritage made him a target for his abusive racist grandpappy. I hate him. Basically the boy has got a shit ton of shit to sort out. And he does. Even when he pulls his problematic crap our gal puts his booty right in place. I love that Mealy takes none of his crap and as a result he learns maturity. And I super duper love that Samir's hard eyes knocked my fangirl ass six ways till Sunday. It's so adorable! Samir is so cute, I might just vomit. Boy does it all, including getting horny pants watching our gal have a food gasm. That dinner scene was literally the cleanest, dirtiest, non-foreplay foreplay you're ever gonna read. This dude's romantic stunts even include furniture buying. Like how cute is that? Boy is an alpha and a beta and a smexy all rolled into one. He'll throw a punch to defend her, so that's our alpha, and then he'll censor his profanity because he knows it upsets her, and that's our beta. <laughs> My heart can't take that much cute shit. And yet, cute antics aside, this romance was as much a heart punch as a brain punch. By paragraph two, I was feeling things, y'all. Paragraph two! Who feels things on paragraph two? Me! Lada surveyed the scene from the very edge of the chaos. Her father in law had pulled some hefty strings to obtain this most coveted corner spot where it should have been relatively quiet. Only it wasn't, thanks to her son's chubby cheek bride, who bawled so loudly Lada couldn't decide if she wanted to slap the child's face or pull her close. What kind of girl child cried like that, as though she had the right to be heard? Oh my god! Sonali paints pictures using words that are poetic yet realistic. She's beautiful without being flowery, and girl uses those words to say something. Why does Bahi's bride cry, Baji? The boy whispered against Lada's belly, his Hindu so pure no one would know he'd spoke it for but a few years. Lada kissed his soft golden head. It was all the answer she could give him. She could hardly tell him it was because the child had been born a girl, destined from birth to be bound and gagged, to never be free. Every time she spoke to Nani, Millie had the overwhelming sense of having run away from her duties. Did everyone who left their country feel this way? Ground between the millstones of courage and cowardice? Or was it just her? Whoa. Words like those are why I get so pissed at romance critics. A Bollywood affair addresses racism and sexism. And yet the same book offers real humor. What about these? You want your in-laws to see your mangoes? Save those for the man who's going to eat them. <laughs> it can't get any better than that. Nope, that's a lie. This book low-key throws down philosophy like it's no biggie. You can't learn anything from losing someone you love. Any lesson you've learned from that isn't a lesson. It's a compromise with life. A lie you tell yourself. Damn. Slap my ass and call me Peach because holy crap! 
this romance will kick you in the face with all the emotions and some not yet invented. The OTP are perfect, the story is perfect, the prose is perfect, the sex is... well... Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop myself for a second. Now, don't doubt my ass. When these two finally do the boom boom jiggity, I was a billion percent satisfied. The timing was brilliant and the chemistry was blazing bloomers hot. Hell, the two even used a tree for back support. It was sweet and hot, but um, quick question. Where was the condom? Yes, the sex was unplanned, but nobody's concerned about STIs or unwanted pregnancies. Dude is a sex machine, so there's no law saying he couldn't have rubber stashed in the car. But that was the only time the plot jarred me out of the book. So it still gets two thumbs way, way, way up. The romance and characters were beautiful, and the story was emotionally captivating. It was a book that made me feel and think. I got to learn so much about Indian culture culture, from black beaded necklaces to feet touching. There may be 67 gajillion reasons for you to read this book, but my favorite will always be number two, your brain learning a thing. Mine included. Plus, somebody alert the media. We got a romance that admits morning breath is a thing. Y'all know Romance Landia doesn't do that. Nobody has periods and nobody's got morning breath. While you all inform the masses, I'll be in the corner making out with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you all hear the uh, truck outside or the bird that won't shut its face? If you can, I'm sorry. If you guys haven't read this book, I swear to Lord and Aphrodite and Yoda and everybody else, you're gonna love it. I want more words by Sonalia Dev. Also wanna apologize if I mispronounce any character name or, you know, the author's name. Please feel free to smack me. <laughs> I deserve it. This white girl is ignorant. I know not of what I speak even when I research it to do the pronunciation because apparently my brain's just like, we're gonna forget about that and say it the way your dumb ass still wants to say it. That was a lot of brain thinking. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go uh, lay down and take a nap because <laughs> feelings.